A shocking murder. New tonight on Our News Live at 7, FNM Deputy Chairman Donald Saunders fatally shot in Gambier Village last night. Family and friends in total grief. This, as investigators say, we are coming to get you to those responsible for the former parliamentarian's death. Plus, a rape convict learns his fate today, sentenced to 25 years. We'll tell you the morning workout assault that landed him behind bars. And then in our news at 7.30, the tragic killing of the FNM's deputy chairman comes back into focus as condolences continue to pour in. Our news live at 7 starts right now. system and I just want to end on that note uh, every minister understands that he serves at the pleasure of the Prime Minister um, um, the point that Mr. Monroe made earlier the Prime Minister says that his ministers I think uh, again I think it, it's a cheap job at the Prime Minister respectfully Mr. Monroe that isn't a point though I, I, I respect his view right but I think I agree with him I help I help people every day but the point is that I mean I think we're looking at it in a, in a bigger a bigger picture than what he's looking at it we're talking about the fact that we we we, we want our MPs to be focused on what they should be focused on and to help persons as much as they can, which we do. And so I'm, I'm not saying that anyone in Torpine shouldn't be able to come to me and say, don't I need assistance, and I'd be able to direct them where they need to be directed. But I'm saying as a, a, the culture has to change in the Bahamas. I think it's political payback, and anyone, I, I think, that is associated with the former government and may have gotten um, a contract, particularly the small man, um, is, is being penalized. I want to say, particularly uh, to my cousins on behalf of your other cousins, on behalf of my aunts, on behalf of my deceased uncles and grandparents, that she was indeed a special person. She would always be a special person. She will always be our auntie toy that we can hang out with. May her soul, the souls of the departed, rest in peace. A poignant glimpse into the life of the deputy chairman of the Free National Movement and former deputy House Speaker Donald Saunders, tragically killed in Gambier Village last night. Welcome to Our News Live at 7, I'm Arlena Leonard. The esteemed former parliamentarian, a towering figure, who ardently championed the cause of his party as a stalwart advocate. A devoted family man, his legacy now stands immortalized in those fleeting moments captured in time. At the emotional scene where Saunders was gunned down last night, the country's top cop, family and friends, some of whom recounted the last words they shared. Joshua Williams, who's been following this, joins us live from FNM headquarters, where a memorial for their fallen party executive is underway. Now, Josh, this is obviously a really sad time for the party. Can you tell us, you know, what's it like out there? Good evening, Marlena. Good evening, Bahamas. Now we're standing just outside of Free National Movement headquarters here on Mackey Street. And a council meeting would have just wrapped up moments ago. Now it was nearly 24 hours ago where individuals here, along with myself and police, were summoned to the Gambier Village community, where we witnessed the aftermath of the murder of former Tall Pines MP and former Deputy House Speaker Don Saunders. <laughs> These heart-wrenching cries filled the night sky as the shocking and tragic reality hit home for the family and friends of former Free National Movement MP Don Saunders. Saunders was shot and killed outside a club in the Gamber Village community around 9 last night, leaving many to ask what happened. At the scene, Police Commissioner Clayton Fernando told reporters police believed it may have been a robbery gone bad. It's a club, yeah. There were about five to six patrons uh, sitting out uh, in the yard when two armed men, both were masked, uh, held all of the patrons at bay and demanded cash. The patrons, uh, they panicked and everybody ran in different direction. Shots were fired. As news of Saunders' shocking death spread across the island, more and more people showed up to find out if the tragic news was true. Scores of community leaders and politicians stood on the sidelines in disbelief. Among the onlookers was Archdeacon Keith Cartwright, who was a foster father to Saunders since he was 13 years old. 
Cartwright sharing he had just returned home from Holy Mass when he received the gut-wrenching news. His family could be seen openly grieving on scene. According to Cartwright, not everyone was there, including one of his children who was out of the country. His daughter, Danielle, is in college in the United States. She just left from spring break. His mother um, was on her way to Andrus to visit the family for the Easter holidays. But I understand that the boat captain is kind enough to turn the boat around to bring her back. Saunders work with the Free National Movement goes back to 2002 as a council member, then as National Deputy Secretary in 2012, and as Member of Parliament for Tall Pines and Deputy House Speaker under the Minnis administration. It was his commitment to church and community, however, that Cartwright says was his greatest achievement. Don himself is now one of the um, MCs on the altar with Bishop Boyd, who is the priest there now. Now we also understand that this Opal Open Council meeting also served as a prayer service, an opportunity for members and friends to comfort one another. We also learned that party leader Michael Pintard would have addressed this gathering, and should we have any updates for you, provide them in our 7.30 newscast. Marlena? Thanks for that, Joshua. Well, police investigations into Saunders' murder taking them to CCTV technology in the area. This as they met with his family this afternoon at police headquarters. Both police and Saunders' brother had strong words for those responsible. Let's take a look. Whoever did it, you know, if they have any heart, they would just turn themselves in. Because they took away a person who loved people, loved life, loved everything that God created. Ronald Newbold, devastated and still reeling from the shocking murder of his younger brother, reflecting on the kind of man his brother was. He don't have to know you. He don't care what side of the political arena you're on. He will welcome you. He will get whatever you need. If you need something, he will just give it to you. You know, that's him. A very loving person. Newbold says so far the family is confident in police investigations. His comments to the media outside of the East Street headquarters following a family meeting with the authorities. Chief Superintendent Chris Lynn Skippings in updating the media, confirming the area is outfitted with closed circuit TV. The investigators have returned to the crime scene. They are galvanizing the area for additional evidence. We are in support of the family members. And in this particular matter, as we do it all of our investigations, we are going to leave no stones unturned in this matter. Chief Superintendent sending this strong warning to the suspects. We're coming to get you. We're going to get you. In short order. While Newbold had his own message to the criminals who took his brother's life. They just need the man up, you know. And if it isn't the first time they do it, they need to stop all this erratic, crazy stuff that has been going on in this country. Be as a country, be small. We don't need this. Killing innocent people. You know, innocent people for no reason. Get up and go to work. Do something and, and make a dollar if you need a dollar. You know? Guys, you all need to stop it. You all just need to stop it. You know? Ruining our country, man. You're ruining the country. And residents in the Gambier community are still reeling from last night's deadly shooting. We spoke to bystanders who wanted their identities hidden for their own safety. When I called the police, the woman asked me, the police woman started asking me, say, if anybody fight nice, they miss. Ain't nobody fight nice, they miss, miss, miss. They firing gunshot, gunshot, gunshot. This Gambia resident lives near the club where former Tall Pines MP Don Saunders was gunned down in cold blood during what police say was an armed robbery gone bad. She recounts the harrowing moments gunshots rang out. I came home because I, I wasn't feeling good. I came home like, Ron. It's like 8.30, and them shots fire off like 9, it's like 9 something last night, but I wasn't focused on the time, the correct time when it started, because I run leave, run leave everything. I saw the two fellas run back to the bar, and when they run to the bar, they run back from the bar to a blue, look, it seems like a note, we we'll park right there on the, on the pavement, and they jump in the car, and then they jump in the car, and blah, 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 again. And they sped off. Saunders was shot and killed at a popular outdoor club in the area, a spot where residents say Saunders, along with others, hung out regularly. While Gambier has seen its share of crime in the past, residents contend it's a safe community. I see what happened to these people. I see these, you know, Gambier people, these strange people. 
I think there's gonna be video gang on like that. We one from the I mean we make fight among ourselves. We had several robberies around here before, but nobody ever get 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 shot, nobody ever get hurt. So this is unusual for you. This is unusual for us, especially for me, right close to my room. Familiar faces, former members of the government and party colleagues were part of the large crowd assembled last night in Gambier Village. Our coverage continues with this from Bertany McDermott. The Free National Movement showing up in droves Wednesday night as word spread quickly of former Tall Pines MP Don Saunders' death. His former parliamentary colleague, now FNM party leader Michael Pintard, in a solemn statement said they're trusting the system to solve the crime. He is a very uh, popular Bahamian who means a lot to so many different communities, particularly because of his own personal outreach in this community, his assistance of so many persons providing pro bono work. Saunders served as deputy house speaker in the last minutes administration and more recently as party deputy chairman. Former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis says he made positive contributions to his party and in government. He says his contributions, while sometimes premature, were always thorough. He was uh, uh, um, extremely helpful um, at parliamentary meetings. He would have brought forth his ideas. Sometimes, sometimes his ideas may, ideas may have been combative or uh, sometimes premature for that particular time, but it was always um, well thought out and, and brought forth. Former Southern Shores MP Frankie Campbell shared a constituency border. He reflected on first meeting Saunders as a young police officer back in the 1990s. I feel that he was objective. Um, I feel that he was concerned about the spirit of the law as well as the letter of the law when it came to the rules of Parliament. Former Cabinet Minister and North Abaco MP Darren Henfield summed him up as never settling for the status quo. I recall Don as a gregarious young man who was always upbeat and prepared to engage and willing to learn and willing to question. He, Don wasn't one to, to stand still with the status quo. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. And Saunders is being remembered as a giant of a man who impacted politics and his community, succeeding in his personal life as a husband, father, and friend. Italia Hall takes a closer look at his life. Former Tall Pines Member of Parliament Donald Saunders, affectionately known as Don, who was born on the 12th of February 1975 in New Providence, to Mitzvah Saunders Strawn and Donald G. Saunders. He's also the foster child of Archdeacon Keith Cartwright. Due to his untimely death, Saunders leaves behind his wife, Tiffany Saunders, and their two children. The former Tall Pines Member of Parliament received his early education at St. Francis and Joseph Primary Schools in Nassau. He ended his high school education in 1992 as a head boy at the L. N. Coakley Secondary School in Exuma. Saunders then pursued his tertiary education. He began his matriculation at the then College of the Bahamas on a distinguished scholarship. In 1994, he graduated with an Associate of Arts degree in history. But it did not end there for Saunders, as he was granted a scholarship from the Grand Bahama Port Authority. That scholarship assisted him in attaining a Bachelor's of Science degree in Sociology and Political Science in 1998 from the University of the West Indies in Barbados. Saunders then shifted his focus and pursued law. He added another degree under his belt, this time a Bachelor of Law degree. He completed a postgraduate diploma in law and the Bar Vocational course shortly after. Saunders was called to the bar in 2001. His career in law then took off. Saunders has worked in several leading law firms, and most recently, he was involved in the high-profile Adrian Gibson trial. The former MP was also an active alumni of the College of the Bahamas and a member of several civic and charitable organizations. While focusing on his law career and family life, Saunders was also building his political career. This as he served in various capacities within the Free National Movement Party over the past two decades, holding positions such as council member, national deputy secretary and executive member. But one of the most highest positions held by Saunders is deputy speaker of the House of Assembly from 2017 to 2021. It's been said that he took the role very seriously and was fair to both political sides. Saunders also took part in several parliamentary trainings across the world. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. Thanks for that, Italia. Now, that memorial for Saunders continues at FNM headquarters at this hour. We'll check back in with our Joshua Williams, who is following this, coming up in our news at 7.30. But for now, it's time for your first look at temperatures. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center. Greg? 
Yeah, thanks Marlene and a happy evening everybody. A warm day around the islands ahead of a front that's now moving into the northwest Palmas. 80 degrees outside our studios, mostly cloudy and breezy. Those winds are starting to pick up out of the southwest at 14 miles per hour and they will be increasing once the front goes through. Your feel strike temperature is at 78. Temperatures around the islands right now across the uh, Grand Bahama and the northwest Palmas. We see 70s, mid to upper 70s, 77, Freeport, 76, Marsh Harbor, Abaco and Governor's Harbor. Alistair Bimini, Nicholson Andrews here in the capital, 80, 79 in Great Harbor Key. Central Bahamas, 80 in Kemp's Bay, 78 Georgetown, 76 Arthurstown, Cat Island, Cuban Towns in Salvador, 74, 77 in Deadman's Key. And into the Deep South, 79 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, we pick up 76 Colonel Hill, Crooked Island, Delectable Bay, Acklands, and Abrams Bay, as well as Providentialis, you guys are 77. Matthew Town in Aqua, you are 78 at this hour. Frontal boundary now moving into the northwest Palmas, as I mentioned, a lot of clouds ahead of the front, this little band of showers. That is the actual front, not much weather associated with that. So that front will continue to swing through, but very strong winds will be building behind this front through tonight and into tomorrow. So we have some gale warnings posted for the northwest Palmas. We'll tell you more about that later on in our extended forecast. Marlena? Still to come on our news, a man sentenced to 25 years for rape and armed robbery after assaulting a woman during her morning workout. But first, the murder investigation underway in Bimini after a man was found shot dead when our news returns. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. A man is dead in Bimini, and police on that northern island are now trying to piece together what led to his murder. Police say they were notified of gunshots near a business on Kings Highway in North Bimini just after midnight. Once they arrived, they found the man unresponsive, suffering from gunshot wounds. The local doctor was called to the scene where he confirmed the victim had died. Police are appealing to anyone with information to contact 911-919 or the nearest police station in Bimini at 347-3144. And a man convicted of raping a woman during her morning workout has been sentenced to 25 years. In October, a jury unanimously convicted Christopher Forbes of two counts of rape and armed robbery. The victim was walking on Marshall Road on May 6, 2022, when she was confronted by Forbes, who was armed with a cutlass. Forbes confessed to raping and robbing the married mother of five in his videotaped police interview, but he claimed the sex was consensual at his trial. Forbes, who fired his lawyer and represented himself, did not call any witnesses at his trial or take the witness stand. 
When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as Pope Francis renews ordination vows as he leads Easter events despite health challenges. Plus, the dramatic conclusion in the case of FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried, sentenced to 25 years for fraud. And Haiti's Transitional Council issues its first statement when our news returns. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. Pope Francis embarked on a series of Easter events after renewing his ordination vows today, marking the priesthood's founding by Jesus. Despite recent health setbacks, Francis delivered a poignant homily during Holy Thursday Mass of the Chisholm at St. Peter's Basilica. He emphasized compassion, honesty, and integrity for priests, urging them to acknowledge their shortcomings. And Sam Bankman-Fried, also known as SBF, was sentenced by a New York judge today to 25 years in prison for defrauding customers on his cryptocurrency exchange, FTX. Bankman-Fried admitted to mistakes, but claimed FTX could repay customers. Last November, he was found guilty of fraud and conspiracy in FTX collapse, accused of taking over $10 billion from customers. Bankman-Fried has vowed to appeal his sentence and conviction. And members of Haiti's Transitional Presidential Council have issued their inaugural statement, vowing to reinstate public and democratic order in the nation. With a roadmap for selecting a council president, prime minister and cabinet in place, Prime Minister Ariel Henry has vowed to step down upon the council's formal establishment. The council says it aims to restore security, address poverty and pave the way for free elections and national reforms. Still to come in our news, today in history. Find out interesting facts about the day that was March 28th. Then in our news at 7.30, the brother of slain former MP Don Saunders makes a heart-wrenching appeal to the killer. Plus, the tough decision ahead for the murdered MP's son expected to compete in Carifta swimming this weekend. The story, when our news returns. More control over their energy bill. Is the greatest gift. That's where we come. Resources. Take this journey with us as we build for better. BPL. I'm Michaela Kerr.
Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Welcome back to our news. On this day in Bahamian history in 2015, the then opposition Free National Movement questioned a police probe into a cabinet minister's removal. In 2021, saw government's defense of an airport purchase of $1. And in 2022, gas prices spiked to over $6 a gallon. Head over to ournews.bs for the extended version of Today in History. And shedding light on the profound significance of Maundy Thursday within the Christian faith, Canon Peter Scott from Holy Cross Anglican Church is giving compelling insights into the pivotal day in Holy Week. Berthony McDermott reports. Maundy Thursday is a commemoration of several things, really. It comes from a Latin word meaning modamus, meaning mandate or commandment. And it is on that day that our Lord had his Passover meal with his disciples and um, he gave, out, gave us two commandments that he gave himself that we are to follow. The first one was to love one another as he loved his disciples and also to do this in remembrance of, of him. That's Canon Peter Scott explaining the importance of Monday Thursday. But what about the ritual of foot washing commonly practiced on Monday Thursday? We meet for, Euc for the Eucharist as we go through the Eucharist that Jesus himself gave us. And then we also show love, where Jesus told us to love one another. We show love by the priest washing 12 people's feet to, you know, in symbolic of the 12 disciples. And, and then the third thing is we strip the altar and we take the remaining sacrament that's left and we put it in the back, in what we call the altar of repose. Scott is encouraging all to participate in Monday Thursday observance, whether through attending church services or engaging in prayer and reflection. It reminds us of, of our Lord's love for his people and his world, in which he gave us the Holy Communion service, so that when he'll always be with us. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks, Berthony. To watch that story again and for all of today's top stories, visit ournews.bs. Well, that does it for our news at 7. Joining us now with our Italia Hall with the latest headlines is Italia. All right, thanks so much, Marlena. Well, tonight, the brother of slain former MP Don Saunders makes a heart-wrenching appeal. Plus, the tough decision ahead for the murdered MP's son. Here are your latest headlines. First tonight on our news, live at 7.30, leaders unite in grief as the nation mourns the tragic loss of FNM Deputy Chairman Don Saunders. This as the former parliamentarian's brother pleads with those responsible for his death to turn themselves in. Plus, the tough decision ahead for Don Saunders Jr. expected to represent the Bahamas in Carifta swimming this weekend and later sentenced to 25 years. FTX founder and former CEO Sam Bankman fried vows to appeal. Our news live at 7.30 is back in a moment. I'm Michaela Kerr. I'm an 18-year-old freshman at the University of the Bahamas, and I'm a computer science major. I'm also the NT Corporation Youth Ambassador for the Environment, and I'm an environmentalist. My journey as an environmental advocate began with a simple yet profound realization that our environment is degrading right in front of my eyes. And being NT's Youth Ambassador for the Environment means that my words and my actions hold the power to help change the environment and the world around me. I find it exciting that I can be a student, live my life, and use my words and my voice to change the environment and the world around me. Most times I think it's a privilege, it's our environment, and it's our generation to own. I don't think as a young person that there's anything more rewarding than being a part of bringing awareness. I'm Michaela Kerr, and I'm making a difference in my own words. You've seen electric cars on the road, but isn't it time you drive one? 
Easy Car Sales invites you to experience the smooth, powerful ride and immerse yourself in the luxury and latest tech features. Find out why the Bahamas is going electric. Visit easy242.com and book your test drive now. What are you waiting for? Save money, drive smarter. There's an EV waiting for you at Easy Car Sales. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile service. Touching glimpse into the life of Deputy Chairman of the Free National Movement and former Deputy House Speaker Donald Saunders, tragically killed in Gambier Village last night. Welcome to our news live at 7:30. I'm Italia Hall. We have a more democratic system, and I just want to end on that note. Uh, every minister understands that he serves at the pleasure of the Prime Minister. Um, um, the point that Mr. Monroe made earlier, the Prime Minister says that his ministers, I think, uh, again, I think it, it's a cheap job at the Prime Minister, respectfully, Mr. Monroe. That isn't a point, though. I, I, I respect his view, right? But I think, I agree with him. I help, I help people every day. But the point is that, I mean, I think we're looking at it in a, in a, bigger, a bigger picture than what he's looking at it. We're talking about the fact that we... we we, we want our MPs to be focused on what they should be focused on and to help persons as much as they can, which we do. And so I'm, I'm not saying that anyone in Torpine shouldn't be able to come to me and say, don't I need assistance, and I'd be able to direct them where they need to be directed. But I'm saying as a, a, the culture has to change in the Bahamas. Years ago, it's, I think it's political payback, and anyone, I, I think that is associated with the former government and may have gotten um, a contract, particularly the small man, um, is, is being penalized. I want to say, particularly uh, to my cousins on behalf of your other cousins, behalf of my aunts, behalf of my deceased uncles and grandparents, that she was indeed a special person. She would always be a special person. She would always be our Annie Toy that we can hang out with. May her soul, the souls of the departed, rest in peace. A devoted family man, Saunders' legacy now stands and modernized in those fleeting moments captured in time. The esteemed former parliamentarian, a towering figure who championed the cause of his party as a stalwart advocate. At this hour, a somber mood blanketing his party's Mackey Street headquarters, where a memorial for the fallen deputy chairman is underway. We will check in with our Joshua Williams, who's there live in just a bit, but for now, Condolences continue to pour in from across the political divide as loved ones still in mourning after Saunders' tragic shooting in Gambier Village, just ahead of the Easter holiday. Former Tall Pines Member of Parliament and Deputy Speaker of the House Don Saunders has been called a leader who was passionate about his job. He served as Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly from 2017 to 2021, condolences pouring in from political leaders, national organizations and members of the Tall Pines constituency following the tragic news of his death. Prime Minister Philip Davis in a social media post extending prayers to the Saunders family, he also asked the public to give the family space to grieve. Leader of the Free National Movement, Michael Pintar, taking to X, where he posted, It's with heavy heart that I report the shocking murder of our colleague and friend. We are still gathering all of the facts as we come to grips with this tragedy. Other parliamentarian colleagues like Angliston MP Gladys Hannah Martin also express heartfelt condolences to the Saunders family and his wife Tiffany, who she says is a member of the Ministry of Education team. St. Anne's Member of Parliament Adrian White calls Saunders his FM brother. He also revealed they both completed their pupillage together at Higgs and Johnson. Tall Pines MP Dr. Michael Darrell released a statement on Saunders' untimely death. He shared he got to know the former Deputy Speaker of the House on the campaign trail in the constituency of Tall Pines in the run-up to the 2021 general elections. Darrell described Saunders as a worthy opponent. Now Saunders was tragically killed outside a bar in the Gambier Village community at the age of 49.
Well, the family of the late Don Saunders are calling for the suspects to turn themselves into police. Speaking to media outside of police headquarters this afternoon, Donald Saunders' oldest brother, Ronald Newbull, says the family is pleased with how police are conducting the investigation thus far. We had a good meeting. The police is on the track. He's doing a good investigation. So far, it sounds like they're going to be able to solve this case for us, and we would appreciate that very much when they do do it. Whoever did it, you know, if they have any heart, they would just turn themselves in because they took away a person who loved people, loved life, loved everything that God created. Police describing the incident as a robbery gone wrong and are working with family to determine what if anything the assailant stole from Saunders. His brother says he hopes they will turn themselves in. They just need to man up, you know. And if it isn't the first time they do it, they need to stop all this erratic, crazy stuff that has been going on in this country. Be as a country, be small. We don't need this. Killing innocent people. You know, innocent people for no reason. Get up and go to work. Do something and, and, and make a dollar if you need a dollar. You know? Guys, you all need to stop it. You all just need to stop it. You know? Ruining our country, man. You're ruining the country. All right, so unfortunate, but also on that emotional scene last night, where's our Joshua Williams, who joins us live from the FNM headquarters, where we are told that a memorial is underway now. Josh, I know you've been following this story. Uh, what can you tell us? Well, Italia, sadness tonight as the nation prepares to celebrate one of the most important seasons on the Christian calendar. Just a half hour ago, it was members of the Free National Movement that gathered here at FNM quarters, headquarters here on Mackey Street. These heart-wrenching cries filled the night sky as the shocking and tragic reality hit home for the family and friends of former Free National Movement MP Don Saunders. Saunders was shot and killed outside a club in the Gamera Village community around 9 last night, leaving many to ask what happened. At the scene, Police Commissioner Clayton Fernander told reporters police believed it may have been a robbery gone bad. It's a club there. There were about five to six patrons uh, sitting out uh, in the yard when two armed men, both were masked, uh, held all of the patrons at bay and demanded cash. The patrons, uh, they panicked and everybody ran in different directions. Shots were fired. As news of Saunders' shocking death spread across the island, more and more people showed up to find out if the tragic news was true. Scores of community leaders and politicians stood on the sidelines in disbelief. Among the onlookers was Archdeacon Keith Cartwright, who was a foster father to Saunders since he was 13 years old. Cartwright sharing he had just returned home from Holy Mass when he received the gut-wrenching news. His family could be seen openly grieving on scene. According to Cartwright, not everyone was there, including one of his children who was out of the country. His daughter, Danielle, is in college in the United States. She just left from spring break. His mother um, is on her way to Andrus to visit the family for the Easter holidays. But I understand that the boat captain is kind enough to turn the boat around to bring her back. Saunders' work with the Free National Movement goes back to 2002 as a council member, then as National Deputy Secretary in 2012, and as Member of Parliament for Tall Pines and Deputy House Speaker under the Minnis administration. It was his commitment to church and community, however, that Cartwright says was his greatest achievement. Don himself is now one of the um, MCs on the altar with Bishop Boyd, who is the priest there now. We do apologize for that brief technical issue. Now, Italia, this latest incident holds significant importance as the last time something like this has happened was all the way back in 1997 when former housing minister Chuck Virgil was murdered. Now we'll have the scenes of inside the memorial service held tonight in our newscast tomorrow at 7.30. Back to you in studio. All right, thanks for that, Joshua. Joshua Williams reporting for us live from the FNM headquarters in the capital.
While shock, anger, and reflections coming from the Tall Pines constituency, Don Saunders once represented the chairman of the FNM constituency, describing him as a rising star in his professional life within his party and country. Our Megan Shepherd picks up the story from here. An emotional chairman of the Free National Movement's Tall Pines constituency branch, Derek Brown, reflecting on the life and service of the former area representative. Many of his former constituents, like Brown, grappled with shock and sadness of this violent death. Brown says Saunders brought quite a bit of positive community programs during his term. Uh, Mr. Saunders started a community garden just over here to our uh, right uh, behind the old swimming pool in Jubilee Gardens. Uh, he was instrumental in erecting a number of neighborhood watch signs. Um, he was integral not just in the Jubilee Gardens neighborhood watch but um, also in the fire trail subdivision. Uh, Mr. Saunders was a man who gave his service without question for his constituents and for his party. Um, he is a man that did a number of initiatives at the constituency office, homework programs, resumes, job readiness, those sorts of things. Brown also speaking to Saunders' passion for trying to stop the rampant violence. He recalls that only days ago, Saunders spoke at a constituency meeting about the party's plans to address crime. His death now amplifying the call for an end to the violence. Crime affects us all. Um, no matter which side of the political divide you fall on. We live in these communities. We know the problems and the challenges that we face. And it is our responsibility as Bahamians to protect our country. It is our responsibility not just to put that on the police who are doing a yeoman's job, but it's our responsibility to help keep our communities safe. Amid the grief and anger, Saunders' political comrade cautions the public to allow police time to investigate. But the one thing time will not change for him and many others are the life, legacy and service the former MP leaves behind. This is a man that I had the pleasure of calling a friend. This is a man who, when I was going through my darkest hour, just last month when I funeralized my mother, it is that kind of a person, that kind of heart that Don Sanders had. Reporting for Our News, I'm Megan Shepard. All right, thanks for that, Megan. Such a touching story. Well, working with the former Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly was an easygoing process. That's according to Parliamentary Clerk David Forbes, who recalls how Saunders was interested in the procedure and was easy to teach. Our Bertie McDermott has a story. Chief Clerk David Forbes remembers when Don Saunders first came in as Deputy Speaker in the House of Assembly. He says they've always enjoyed a harmonious and friendly working relationship. I had a, an excellent relationship with Mr. Saunders. He was a very, was a swell guy, very nice guy, very easy to get along with, and very invested and engaged in the institution. Saunders was elected member of parliament for Tall Pines in the 2017 general election. He was appointed deputy house speaker shortly after. Forbes says what made him different from speakers and deputy speakers of the past was his legal background. He's a lawyer. So he would have been familiar with the constitutions and the provisions of the constitution. Many of our other speakers didn't have that. Now, according to Forbes, when Saunders came into the role as deputy speaker, he says he was very easy to train. Understanding that not because you're a lawyer means that you know everything. So he would ask questions and inquire about, well, why are we doing it this way? What is the reason behind that? Upon coming to office, Forbes revealed Saunders and his superior Halston Moultrie were instrumental in producing a bill for an act to provide for the independence of Parliament. And while there wasn't much movement under the former administration, the bill was passed a few months ago. Forbes says even after he left office, Saunders would still frequent his office for legal reasons and share his interests for parliamentary procedure. He says he was in disbelief when he got the tragic news of the killing. Quite frankly, I didn't believe it. I thought it was fake news. And of course, as it, <clears throat> as it became more real to me, and because of the sources that I was getting it from, I was shocked and horrified. Reporting for Our News, I'm Berthony McDermott. Thanks for that, Berthony. Well, as you can imagine, family members are still processing the events of less than 24 hours ago. The murdered MP's son, Don Jr., just one of many. He is expected to participate in the upcoming Carifta Swimming Championships, but whether he'll still be able to compete, a tough decision the Aquatics Federation says will be left up to him and his family. 
We'll speak with the president of that federation in just a bit, but for now, nice temperatures to start off the Easter holiday weekend. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is live in the Weather Center with your first look at weather. Greg, how's yeah. it looking? It's looking pretty nice. Uh, we have a frontal boundary that's coming through, and uh, it's going to be a little on the windy side, but temperatures going to take a nice little dip. So this holiday weekend, it's a good weekend to get out and enjoy. 80 degrees outside the studios right now, partly cloudy to cloudy skies, and it is breezy. Those winds are starting to pick up southwesterly ahead of that front, which is now moving into the extreme northern islands. 40 miles per hour, your face like temperature is at 76. Satellite radar composite showing cloudiness associated with the front. The front is actually this little ribbon of showers moving into the Grand Bahama as well as the Abaco area. You see it's falling apart and most of the clouds are breaking up. So we are looking at some improving conditions, but the winds will be picking up. So it's going to be very rough and windy out there on the waters. Boaters and beachgoers, we're asking you to exercise extreme caution during this weekend holiday. That's your quick check on conditions around the island. Stick with us to look at your extended forecast still to come. Still to come on our news, a 25-year sentence handed down to FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried, convicted of defrauding customers of $10 billion. But first, participation by Don Saunders Jr. in the upcoming Carifta Aquatics Championships now in question amidst his father's tragic death. We'll tell you the tough decision when our news returns. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. The unexpected passing of former Tall Pines MP Don Saunders sending shockwaves throughout his family and the country. One of his family members, his son, Don Jr., who tells our Sasha Lightborn, well, our Sasha Lightborn tells us rather, he has a tough decision to make over whether he'll compete in the 2024 Carifta Aquatics Championships this weekend. We're going to leave it to Don and his family to make the decision for him. That was president of the Bahamas Aquatics Federation, Algernon Cargo, speaking with me about whether Don Saunders Jr. will still compete in the 2024 Carifta Aquatics Championships set to begin on Saturday. This after Don's father, Don Saunders Sr., was fatally shot at a club in Gambier Village Wednesday evening after 9. Don Jr. qualified for this year's Carifta Aquatics team in the open water 5K for boys in the 16 to 18 category. That part of the championship is scheduled for next Wednesday. Cargill says Don Sr. was very supportive of the swim community and was present at every Carifta Swimming Championship over the last decade. Don Sr. was a longtime member of our federation. He was what we call a swim parent. Don was looking forward to coming to Carifta, being that gold skin drummer in the stands. And as for how the Federation will continue to move ahead with this year's championships, Cargill says... I, I really don't know. I know that we have to take one minute at a time. And we know that Dawn would have wanted us to go on. Now, Bahamas Aquatics Federation officials did confirm for us later in the day that Dawn Jr. did indeed practice with his other open water teammates right here at Goodman's Bay this morning. Reporting for our news, I'm Sasha Lightborn. 
Thanks for that, Sasha. Well, founder and former CEO of FTX, Bankman Freed, sentenced to 25 years in prison today for stealing $8 billion from customers of the now bankrupt cryptocurrency exchange. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan handing down the sentence at a Manhattan court hearing. He rejected Bankman Freed's claim that FTX customers did not actually lose money and accused him of lying during his trial testimony. Last November, a jury found the 32-year-old guilty on seven fraud and conspiracy counts stemming from FTX 2022 collapse and what prosecutors have called one of the biggest financial frauds in U.S. history. Kaplan said Bankman Freed showed no remorse and he has vowed to appeal his conviction and sentence. Now, our news spoke exclusively with the former CEO weeks after the initial implosion and told our Jerome Sawyer how he wished he could turn back the hands of time. What do you say to those users who you now have an opportunity to speak to who are asking, why weren't you more careful? Why were you distracted? How could you let this happen? I ask myself some of the same questions. and. I wish that I had a satisfying answer. You know, this is one of those times that I wish I could say, oh, you know, it was because of X, Y, Z, that's why, you know, here's the good, clean explanation that makes everything make sense. I don't think that's the world that we're in. I think the answer is complicated and messy and that it was a slow process and I became more and more focused on what I had viewed as the longer term picture, what I had viewed as where could the company be five years from now, ten years from now. Let's say five, ten years yep. from now. Um, what does a successful outcome look like for you, including efforts to help those Bahamian customers? I mean, at the end of the day, there is one clear definition to me of success, and that is that customers are made whole. Coming up in sports, Team Bahamas on its way to Grenada for Carifta Track and Field, and champions emerge from the Fidelity Sprint Classic. And we're just hours away from the long Easter weekend. If you have outdoor plans, we'll tell you what to expect in the extended weather forecast when our news continues. Stay with us. So you need a part for your car. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. This is our news. Welcome back. Team Bahamas 77-member team arrives in Grenada ahead of the 51st Carifta Track and Field Championships. Here now with our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors is Ronaldo Dorset. Ronaldo? Thanks, Italia, and welcome to our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. Let's do show. Team Bahamas is currently in Grenada and is just hours away from competition at Carifta Track and Field. The Bahamas has fielded a team of 77 athletes for the 51st edition of the Carifta Games, March 30th to April 1st at the Karani James Stadium in St. George's, Grenada. The team had their final practice sessions Wednesday prior to this morning's departure. In 2023, the Bahamas finished second overall as host with 10 gold and a total of 46 medals. This team includes several Carifta veterans and returning medalists from that 2023 squad. The team is coached by Cordell McNabb, assisted by James Roll, 
Roll, Laquell Harris, Alexis Roberts, Branson Roll, and Kenny Moxie Sr. Sophia Higgs is the team manager. The last time Carifta was hosted in Grenada in 2016, the Bahamas won a total of 33 medals, 5 gold, 50 in silver, and 30 in bronze. The JUCO Division 1 tournament run concluded for one Bahamian player and continued for another after Wednesday night's semifinals. Brent Moss and the Barton Community College Cougars defeated Northwest Florida State College 87-73 to advance to the semifinals. Moss had a team high 18 points and 5 rebounds off the bench. The Cougars advanced to take on Indian Hills tonight in the semifinals. In a round 1 win over Walter State, Moss posted 13 points and 6 boards. On the other side of the bracket, Valentino Simon and the Hutchinson Blue Dragons were eliminated in the quarterfinals with a 91-69 loss to Connor State. Simon finished with 6 points. The Bahamas Lawn Tennis Association hosted some of the top junior players in the country at the Fidelity Spring Classic. Headlining the list of champions, the McTaggart brothers won three of the four boys' divisions. Jackson McTaggart won both the under-16 and under-18 boys, while Patrick McTaggart won the under-14 boys' title. Kingston Reese claimed the boys' title in the under-12 division. Brianna Holgrave also won two divisions, the under-14 and under-16 girls. Marina Bostwick survived a three-set battle to claim the under-12 girls title, while Jalissa Clark won the girls' under-18 division. The playoffs are underway for Jonquil Jones and in Inner Mongolia in the Women's Chinese Basketball Association. Recently named the league's International Player of the Year, Jones posted 24 points and 12 rebounds in her team's 98-75 win over Shandong Wednesday night to begin the quarterfinals. They will advance to the semifinals with a Game 2 win Friday night. Over the course of the season, Jones has averaged 23.5 points and just over 12 rebounds per game. Ahead of May's World Athletics Relays, we get an early look at some possible combinations for Team Bahamas as the 2024 outdoor season begins. The Bahamas will field both men and women 400 meter relay teams to compete this weekend at the Florida Relays in Gainesville, Florida. The men's 4x100 meter relay team includes Ian Kerr, Joel Johnson, Samson Colbrook, Terrell Thompson, and Yurik Dean. The women's team includes Charisma Taylor, Printasia Johnson, Brianne Bethel, Camille Rutherford, and Phoebe Thompson. Tyrone Burrows and Pauline Davis Thompson will serve as coaches. That'll do it for our sports presented by Tanthea Seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. Back to the studio. Thanks, Ronaldo. When our news comes back from the break, Greg gets you ready for the long Easter weekend with your extended weather forecast. Stay with us. Hi, the Bahamas. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 3...
Welcome back to our news. Lovely weather conditions outside the R News studio. Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. Greg. Yeah, thanks, Natalia, and welcome back, everybody. It's going to be a very nice weekend. We have a frontal boundary now moving into the northwest Palmas. It's falling apart. Very strong winds expected to build behind this front, so it's going to be breezy tomorrow, but those winds expected to follow Saturday and Sunday. And of course, we expect conditions to be very nice for the holiday weekend. Boating forecast. Gale warnings are up for the northwest Palmas. It winds northwestly initially, but they will swing quickly towards the north and northeast. And they will be picking up in speed, 20 to 25 knots, and they will be gusting to near Gale. Six to nine foot seats expecting some very large swells out there. So boaters and beach goers, we're asking you to stay out of the waters. High tide will be at 10.52 tonight. Low tide at 7, 5.17 in the morning. For the southeast, southeast and central bombers, an advisory post hit. Southwesterly winds initially, but they will also quickly swing to the north to northeast, picking up in speed 15 to 20 plus knots. Seas building 5 to 8 feet in northeasterly swells. For your extended forecast, this is how things will be shaping up for your holiday weekend. Very nice conditions once that front goes through. Breezy conditions, as I mentioned. Very nice for the uh, upcoming week. And of course, we do expect another front sometime by Wednesday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a great night and have a safe holiday weekend. All right, thanks so much, Greg, and thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening. On the record with our Jerome Sawyer, Star 